Gods Unchained was one of the very first crypto games that I reviewed on my channel way back in 2022. It's also among my highest rated, receiving a John score of 44 out of 100. With my biggest complaints being the lack of polish and abundance of confusing crypto mechanics, I didn't think the game had much to offer, but that was over a year ago, and Gods Unchained still exists. In fact, it likely has one of the strongest and most stable player bases of any crypto game out there. So, was I completely wrong about Gods Unchained? Is it the perfect example of a crypto game that managed to reach mainstream success? I'll answer these questions and more in today's episode of Performance Report. Let's get started. Gods Unchained is an online collectible card game created by the Australian developer Immutable Games. It initially launched into an open beta test in late 2018. It is now 2024 and the game has still not left beta. Immutable has continued to release new updates for the game on a somewhat regular basis. These updates, however, trend more towards adding microtransactions than fixing bugs. The most noteworthy of these updates was the much anticipated release of the mobile client for the game. Released in February 2024, this long overdue app and its constant delays were a source of community frustration. Ever since the mobile app was first teased three years ago, investors of the project speculated that this would skyrocket the game's popularity. According to one commenter on my previous video, You'll be crying once mobile drops and a quarter of Hearthstone's player base moves over to Gods Unchained on the next bull run, saving this URL so I can come back in 2027 and laugh. Without spoiling the rest of the video, I can safely say that you are in fact incorrect and no portion of Hearthstone's player base has moved to Gods Unchained. In another pursuit for popularity, Immutable added Gods Unchained to the crypto shovelware platform known as the Epic Game Store. Regarding this, another commenter would add, Dude, you gotta stop. This one's actually just been picked up by Epic Games. Good luck with your attitude, bro. It's kinda sad. Contrary to what you may think, Epic Games themselves had nothing to do with getting Gods Unchained added to the platform, and this is no indication of Epic's support for crypto. Just about anyone can list a game on the Epic Games Store, and we already know that from my previous dumpster dives. But hey, good luck with your attitude too, bro. I'm sure that your Gods Unchained gameplay channel will finally break that 20 view barrier, as long as you keep up the hard work. While bag holders speculated that the Epic Game Store listing would be huge, the data says otherwise. At the time of the launch in June last year, the player base would jump from 5,400 to 6,400 for about a month. Then it would quickly turn course and decline down to just 4,900 players by September. This addition to the Epic Game Store wasn't without controversy, as within a few months of launch, the game would be delisted. Gods Unchained had been given an adults-only ESRB rating. Due to its implementation, of real-world money and gambling aspects. It's against the rules of the Epic Game Store to have an adults-only game, so it was kicked off the store. The delisting was short-lived, however, and the game was quickly returned to the store under a new exception created specifically for crypto games. At the time of my initial review, the game was averaging around 9,000 unique players per day, drastically lower than the game's previous peak of 50,000 in 2021. This disappointing 90% decline in player base could perhaps even be worse, as a portion of the remaining player base is likely bots. While there's really no way to know the exact number of bots playing the game, it's well known that people use bots to play crypto games to farm for the rewards. Because of this, it would be naive to assume that there are zero bots in Gods Unchained. But for the sake of analysis, let's just pretend that there are literally zero bots and take all of these numbers at face value. Since 2021, the player base has consistently declined month over month until hitting an all-time low of 4,900 unique players per day in September 2023. Shortly after player counts bottomed out, October would mark the release of Gods Unchained's first new game mode, Sealed Mode. This is essentially gambling. Sealed Mode is a common style of play across many card games, digital or otherwise. Instead of building a deck of cards from your own collection, you purchase a specified number of booster packs. Then you build whatever deck you can using only the cards that you get from those packs. If you win 7 games before you lose 3, then you win a hefty prize of 2 legendary card packs and 21 gods tokens currently valued at about $7. In order to enter a sealed mode tournament, you must buy in with 5 gods tokens, 
or a buck 65. To break even, win at least five games before losing three. This format was highly requested, and after its release, the game saw increasing player counts for the first time in years. Taking advantage of the increased interest, the team at Immutable would add Gods Unchained to the Amazon Prime gaming portal. Members of the platform are eligible to claim a bundle of rare card packs on a recurring basis, a much needed quality of life improvement. This all brings us to today, shortly after the release of the Gods Unchained mobile client, where the game sits comfortably at about 8,000 players and 38,000 matches per day. It's not a bad number by any means, and for a crypto game, it's impressive. But that's enough of the statistics. Let's see how Immutable has managed to improve the actual game through a half decade of beta testing. I started off by installing the desktop client through the Epic Game Store. This was simple enough, as I was able to quickly log in using my previously created Immutable account. In the past year, Immutable has introduced their own crypto wallet, called the Immutable Passport. Currently, it's only supported by two games, Gods Unchained and something called Storm Warfare. Well, we're already here, so let's give it a look. It seems like it's a military-themed trading card game, and it boasts over 10,000 AI-generated characters. Wow. The first thing I noticed about the Gods Unchained client is that it got a bit of a facelift since the last time I used it. But it's not actually any better, it's just smaller. They also overhauled the pack opening screen, and it now has some fancy animations and sounds. Well, sometimes. More often than not, this screen doesn't work properly, and your card packs won't even show up until you restart the client. This new pack opening experience has become a bit of a meme in the Gods Unchained community, it seems. Players joke about how the full release of the game was delayed by three years to create this janky feature, and that the devs should be fired. Last time I played the game, I had gained a couple of gods tokens as a reward for winning. With these tokens, I can purchase some new cards, so let's give it a try. To purchase cards, you must navigate to the Gods Unchained marketplace in your browser. Once you log in with the Immutable Passport single sign-on, you can spend your tokens on any card you like. My experience buying a card was entirely straightforward and without any hitches. I simply searched for the card I wanted, then clicked purchase. Within a few seconds, I saw the card in my collection and was able to put it in my deck. No complaints here. That is, until I wanted to fund my account with more gods tokens. While technically there is a way to use a credit card to do this, you'll likely not be able to get it to work. Gods Unchained supports MoonPay to fund your wallet, and there is a minimum purchase amount of $22 worth. However, as I found out in the last episode, most credit card companies automatically decline any crypto-related purchase. And in my case, so does my debit card. This means that I'm on my own to figure out how to fund my account. I've explained this a countless amount of times, so you probably don't need to hear it again. But regardless, buying crypto is a pain in the ass. And considering that most crypto games have a minuscule amount of free content, it's tough to avoid purchasing any if you want to play the game seriously. Since I can't use a credit card or debit card to buy with MoonPay, my only alternative is to create a Coinbase account. Once all of that is set up and approved, I can finally purchase God's tokens. But that's just the first step. I now have to move the God's tokens to my immutable passport to use them in-game. Seems simple. Just click send and it's there, right? No, of course not. The God's tokens that you buy on Coinbase are on a different layer of the blockchain. To convert the coins to a different layer, you have to send them from your Coinbase wallet to your MetaMask wallet paying a transaction fee. Then you use MetaMask to move the coins from the Ethereum network to the Immutable network, paying another fee. But wait a minute, you can't pay this fee with God's tokens, you have to use Ethereum. So if you don't already have any of that, you'll need to go back to Coinbase and buy some. Finally, you can send the Ethereum over to your MetaMask wallet so you can pay the fee. Okay, we've got the gods and the ethereum in our wallets. Now we can pay the fee required to turn layer 1 gods into layer 2 gods. I hope you did all of this swapping during off-peak hours, because otherwise you might have spent up to $30 in fees. Send the gods from your metamask wallet to your immutable passport and then you're finally ready to purchase a single card. Good job. I actually don't think that I've ever talked about the different layers of the blockchain in any of my previous videos, so I'll explain it really quickly. Basically, because blockchains are so slow and expensive to use, people created a blockchain that runs on top of the other blockchain. This layer 2 blockchain bundles transactions together and then sends them on the layer 1 blockchain, reducing fees and speeding up transactions. 
However, it creates an immense amount of confusion, as the same tokens exist on multiple layers. If you accidentally send a layer 1 coin to a layer 2 wallet, then your coins are just gone forever. And I'm not even exaggerating how complicated this is. The explanation that I just gave was taken straight from a comment on the Gods Unchained subreddit. Even they know it sucks. Quote, it's not intuitive and it's the greatest hurdle to overcome if Gods Unchained ever wants to grow large. The gameplay is good, but doing the crypto dance sucks. Yeah, that's an understatement. Whatever, let's just give it a try. I've already got my Coinbase account approved from last month's video, so I'll just purchase $50 of Ethereum and I'll use that to buy the Gods Unchained tokens. Oh, never mind, apparently I need to wait 9 days before I'm allowed to move the money. Man, I love crypto. Anyway, I added the new card to my deck and queued up for a ranked game. As you can probably see just from looking at the footage, nothing has changed. They haven't even fixed the glitch where some unit's damage values are missing. This has been a glitch for years. Also, there's this arrow here that you click to end your turn. It's supposed to glow to indicate that there are no more possible moves left to make. But of course, it doesn't work properly, and I don't think it ever has. Sometimes it glows when you can still make moves, and other times it won't glow when you can't make a move. These are just two of the most obvious issues. There are too many more to list. It's almost like the game is fundamentally broken at its core, and every patch introduces more bugs. Other than the obvious lack of polish and abundance of bugs, Gods Unchained still feels tremendously clunky and sluggish to play. There are a lot of unnecessary clicks and animations that do nothing but waste time. For example, the card Vicious Rend has the effect of dealing 3 damage to a unit. I would expect to just be able to click and drag the card from my hand to the unit that I wish to target, like how it works in Hearthstone. Instead, you must drag the card onto the field, then wait a second for the animation to play, and then click on your target. Little things like this start to add up to a whole lot of waiting around. Even the board wipe animations take a long time to play, as you have to sit and watch each card get destroyed one by one. This problem has only been amplified over the past year, as newer cards with complicated effects have been introduced. Because importantly, the turn timer, or rope as it's usually called, does not pause during animations. This animation time can apparently be weaponized according to posters on the game's subreddit and discord. There are certain combinations of cards that have effects that trigger other cards, creating a chain of infinitely looping animations. These animations can be so long that they'll actually run past your turn and into your opponents, reducing their available time to play cards. You can then either skip your opponent's turn entirely, or just waste so much time that they get frustrated and quit. This is even worse when you're playing the game on low spec hardware, as if the game lags during any animations, that's lost time where you can't input a move. There's no way to disable or speed up any animations, because apparently they're tied to some sort of server side logic. Problematic animations are constantly mentioned by players, and they're a much requested change. However, the developers of the game have stated that due to the game's spaghetti code, it would require a complete rewrite to modify animation speeds. Since I'm only playing at the lowest ranks with the most basic starter cards, I'm not encountering half as many issues as the game actually has, but a quick glance through the game's subreddit or discord server will yield plenty of posts complaining of constant bugs with cards disappearing, becoming unplayable, or just overall broken interactions. It seems like every new update introduces dozens of new issues, and and almost no effort is made to rectify them. Enough complaining about bugs though, let's talk about the convoluted currency system and earning cards as a free to play player. I spent a good 10 minutes in my previous review explaining the game's Byzantine currency structure. To sum it up, there's basically no way to craft or upgrade free cards as a new player, so you're relegated to purchasing cards from the marketplace. They do give you some free currency, but it's a pittance, and you'd never be able to buy a legendary card with that amount. Also, the rewards take a week to get distributed into your account, which means more waiting around. In order to get the most free tokens per day, you have to play 10 matches. This can easily take 2 hours. Each match is between 15 and 20 minutes, not including the queue time. Even worse, sometimes the enemy doesn't connect to the game. This requires you to sit and wait for 3 minutes until the game times out and returns you to the lobby. Imagine waiting in a 10 minute queue only for the enemy to time out and the game not count. Oh, wait, I don't have to imagine that, because that happened to me twice in a row. Thank you, Gods Unchained. 
This ends up becoming way too much of a time commitment for what is a simple card game. This is a casual genre, meant for a quick match on the train or on the toilet. Like, look at the competition. A game of Marvel Snap only lasts three minutes. Last time I played Gods Unchained, I complained that the queue times were far too long, averaging almost 10 minutes per game on a weekday. While these can still be slow at higher ranks, it's far better nowadays for new players. Is this because the mobile release brought in tens of thousands of new players? No, it's because they added bots. Well, I guess that answers the question from earlier. But John, how do you know they're bots? They all have the same randomly generated adjective plus noun usernames. They also all have the same playstyle, going directly for your face every turn, no matter what. I was matched against bots for 7 out of the 12 games that I played. Adding bots to the lower ranks to keep queue time short isn't inherently a problem. Actually, it's kind of a necessity with a game like this. But playing against them is really unsatisfying, as short of going AFK, they're impossible to lose to. Also, when I played against a bot, I never had any issues with the enemy player disconnecting. Speaking of disconnecting, there's still no way to reconnect to a match if the game crashes. You just instantly lose. This issue is made even worse when playing the game through the mobile client, which users have reported as being riddled with bugs. I'll give my two cents and say that I actually didn't encounter any game-breaking bugs when using the mobile app, but it didn't exactly feel great to use. The UI is not scaled properly, and things feel small and clunky to tap on my iPhone 14. You also can't purchase cards or claim rewards using the app, so you'll still need a desktop to do that. But other than that, I guess the game works fine. Judging by the game's reviews on the App Store, a lot of people seem to be facing critical issues that make the app unusable. Many cards have missing animations or simply don't work on mobile, and it has a tendency to crash frequently. Again, without any way to reconnect to a match, I can only imagine how frustrating it would be to lose because the app crashed. But wait a minute, if the developers themselves say that the game is full of spaghetti code and needs a rewrite, then why are they even working on the mobile app? The desktop version of the game barely works to begin with, and it doesn't seem like the mobile version is any better. So if the developers aren't improving the gameplay experience, what the hell have they been doing for all these years? Printing money. Since I last played the game, they've released three new expansion packs, each one with limited edition card sales. Remember, all cards in Gods Unchained are limited in supply, so once an expansion is sold out, those cards can only ever be purchased on the secondary market. This allows the developers to take advantage of FOMO and urgency, somehow justifying $210 for a booster pack of five cards. And don't forget the whopping 8% transaction fee for the marketplace. It's almost like Gods Unchained Chained went directly from beta to maintenance mode, skipping the 1.0 release entirely. It seems like there's only a skeleton crew left working on Gods Unchained. Instead of focusing on this dying video game, Immutable has shifted most of their resources into working on their Layer 2 blockchain and wallet. Gods Unchained was originally just a proof of concept. I don't know if they ever expected it to get as popular as it did. But they launched the game during the height of the last crypto bubble, and it kind of blew up. But five years later, the tech debt has piled up, and the player count has declined, leaving little incentive to fix the litany of bugs plaguing the game. Why bother? All Immutable needs to do is to dump some new overpowered limited edition cards every few months. These investors masquerading as players will gladly fork over another couple million. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Gods Unchained is a bit sad, in a way. It's actually quite enjoyable to play, as long as you ignore the glitches. But there's little incentive for me to play the game in the long run. Since it takes a week for all token rewards to be paid out, it lacks the instant gratification and feedback loop that would keep you engaged for a long play session. And because the rewards are minuscule, I'm not exactly excited to sit through a slog of bot battles for 5 cents an hour. The next logical step would be to just suck it up and deposit 20 bucks so I could buy a strong deck and rank up faster. But then what? 20 bucks can get you a whole lot of great games nowadays, a much better value than a single deck in a buggy trading card game. Despite all these negatives, I can totally see why someone would enjoy this game. It's obvious why it's one of the most successful crypto games. But as soon as you bring the existence of non-crypto games into the equation, Gods Unchained doesn't stand a chance. Did I mention that Immutable calls this a triple A game? Give me a break. 
with our re-review complete, it's time to jump back in time and look at the original John score for Gods Unchained, posted on December 10th, 2022. But before we do that, I wanted to calculate how much money I would have made if I had invested the ad revenue from that video into the Gods token. To date, this video has made about $600 after YouTube's fees. That would have gotten me about 2,600 Gods tokens, which today would be worth $800. For comparison, let's look at some of the other things that I could have done with that money. If I'd invested it into the S&P 500, which is what I usually do with my YouTube earnings, it would have grown to about 750 bucks. If I just left it in my savings account at 4% interest, it would be 630. Considering that Gods Unchained is probably as close to the most legitimate and stable crypto game you can get, the return on investment isn't half bad. But remember, to actually cash that money out, I would easily be paying $20 in fees. And I would have had to pay a fee when I bought the tokens in the first place. So this makes the actual return closer to that of the overall stock market. Therefore, I don't think that investing in Gods Unchained, or really any crypto game for that matter, is a good way to make money. But hey, I'm no investment advisor, I'm just some regular dude. It's your money, spend it however you want. Anyway, returning to the John score, I gave Gods Unchained a 3 out of 5 for ease of access. The negatives included an incomplete tutorial system, too many currencies, and a complicated process for buying crypto. Considering that none of these aspects have changed at all since 2022, I would say that a 3 out of 5 is still sufficient. Next up, we have graphics and audio. I originally gave a 2 out of 5 here, mostly because the game felt unfinished. Well, a year has passed, and it doesn't look any better. If anything, it looks worse, considering that the new card opening menu has half-functional audio that randomly stops working. The new desktop client isn't any better either, and the mobile version isn't good enough to justify an increase. I would actually say that the total stagnation is enough of a reason to warrant subtracting another point, so I'll adjust this to a 1 out of 5 in the graphics and audio section. Okay, the gameplay. I gave a 3 out of 5 here, since Guns Unchained is really not a bad game. My original complaints are all still valid though. Locking balance is stupid, artificial scarcity hurts the players and makes prices higher, and at the end of the day, this is really just a carbon copy of Hearthstone. The addition of hundreds of new cards only exacerbates these issues, especially considering that there's still multiple card interactions that are non-functioning due to bugs. And of course, getting the new cards and building a big collection still requires a massive time or money commitment. The Amazon Prime rewards are nice, but you'll still never get as many free cards as you would in any other game of this kind. In general, I don't think there have been any improvements to the gameplay that would necessitate an increase in score. The new sealed mode is cool, and although I didn't try it, I get the idea. But it's also something that Hearthstone has had since the very beginning, and it costs real money to enter. So, therefore, not worth an extra point. Gods Unchained will then stay at a 3 out of 5 in the gameplay category. Next up, the value add of crypto and NFTs. Originally, I gave Gods Unchained a 1 out of 5 here. Crypto only seems to add more problems to the game, and in no case does it make it more fun or accessible. Considering that this will never change, I can't give them any extra points. The only reason they get a 1 here is because they actually implemented the crypto, unlike a lot of other crypto games I reviewed. And for the last point, we have Will the Project Succeed? Here, I gave them a score of 2 out of 5. The game definitely makes money for Immutable, but I can't see the player base ever getting close to its previous highs. I predicted that the game would just continue to slowly decline until eventually disappearing. So far, this has mostly turned out to be true, and the player base has not increased since my initial review. But since they've introduced bots, we can't even trust the player counts anyway, so who knows, it might actually be worse than it appears. The mobile app was released far too early, and it didn't lead to the widespread mainstream adoption that the bag holders would have hoped for. That reminds me, the Gods Unchained subreddit was hyping up the GameStop NFT marketplace as a huge catalyst for the game, thanks to GameStop's partnership with Immutable. Going back and reading all of the comments from this announcement yields a never-ending source of comedy. Buckle up, boys. That's a lot of indirect publicity to gods and gods unchained. I'm so bullish. One day, soon, we'll be able to seamlessly trade our gods unchained cards for a triple-A Xbox game. Crazy! Dude, that would be epic. As you all know, the cult of GameStop always follows their beloved company. Everyone knows GameStop is the pioneering force in the gaming industry. 
Guess that didn't work out as expected. Today, GameStop has left the NFT world entirely, shutting down both their marketplace and crypto wallet, breaking their partnership with Immutable. Whoops. Oh boy, I can't wait until I get to re-review Kiraverse. In conclusion, the 2024 adjusted John score for Gods Unchained is a whopping 40 out of 100. My overall opinion remains mostly the same. There are so many better games available, and the amount of money you could ever earn with this game is nowhere near enough to justify the extreme time commitment it would require. Sure, being able to get a bit of your investment back when you're done is nice, but you'll likely never make a profit. And since the cars are far more expensive than in a comparable game, you'll be stuck with a couple hundred bucks tied up in illiquid assets that only ever lose value. And remember, you gotta pay fees whenever you sell and withdraw, further hurting your margins. So, are you really even getting any money back? I'm starting to think that these crypto bros either place no value on their time or have no ability to do basic math, because those are the only ways that I could ever see playing Gods Unchained as a profitable endeavor. But with eloquently worded comments like this, how could anyone ever insult their intelligence? Anyway, I've been John, and thanks for watching. Do you play Gods Unchained and disagree with my opinions? Leave your salty comments below so I can pin you for everyone to laugh at. Thanks again to all the bag holders who support the channel. Memberships start at $3 a month and give you unlimited access to all John livestream recordings. Plus, your name gets listed here in the video credits. Goodbye.